Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today um, for our webinar, Point Cloud Workflows, uh, Workflows in Architectural BIM Practice. We're very happy that we're having uh, Carol today. Um, I think he's going to say um, a few words about himself and introduce him uh, himself. And uh, yeah, without further ado, because we started a little later today, I'm going to give the word to Karel and he's going to start with his presentation. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to have you here with us on our presentation. So uh, today um, we will going to talk a little bit about uh, workflows and architectural BIM practice, and not only BIM, but also CAD practice. I'll share some thoughts and insight and ideas of uh, what we actually uh, might like my, what we can do with laser scanning. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's that's basically me. <laughs> so uh, I'm a founder of uh, BIM Factoria. We specialized here in point clouds, and mostly in uh, this uh, you know, BIM implementation, outsourcing, and uh, we also specialize in point cap platform as a trainer and uh, laser scan specialist here in Poland. And we um, we are happy to share our thoughts, share our insight with you uh, guys uh, who are interested in laser scanning. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, all about me for today. So just about point cap, uh, it's, we're gonna talk about it later, but here, of course, to all of you to know what we are dealing with, what kind of uh, brilliant software we have, because I'm gonna speak like as a practitioner, mostly because it's, uh, uh, I think that's the best way to introduce software from the practice point of view and also show you some kind of uh, things that I've uh, prepared for you. So <clears throat> PointCap is this uh, software which uh, enables you to work with different, different laser scanners. By different laser scanners, I mean different, uh, different manufacturers, but not only laser scanners, also uh, the mobiles, drones, uh, even mobile phones today. Uh, like ALS, TLS, and MLS, so many of those. Um, it has this, uh, let's say, automatic creation of any views and sections, so it's uh, very, uh, uh, very good in this way. Uh, I'll show you examples. Uh, and it's compatible with uh, different CAT system and also uh, BIM systems. And uh, it easy up the creation of uh, BIM models, not only because of uh, importing, exporting point cloud into your uh, BIM software, but also uh, because of the, uh, the implementation of uh, uh, of um, uh, add-ons, let's say. So, so basically, the inventory of each object uh, is always a long and uh, tedious process, right? So, however, it is inevitable when all types of changes need to be measured. So the scale of the problem increase, and only if the object is modernized, renovated, or extended in some way. For example, if it's historic building, that it, it can be done. Any harm can be done. There shouldn't be any harm. So analog, also inventory has many dangers ahead. So it's not only causes a significant waste of time today, which you have to spend a large amount to adapt to the dimensions of the object but also cause uh, this uh, significant inaccuracy and again inaccuracy and we might say again inaccuracy because it's uh, to sometimes to irregular measurements. And uh, so at this point when we want to investment process to be unchanged and run without any major slowdowns, uh, the ideal solution seems to be a 3D laser scan, which is ideal for measuring for 21st century, let's say. Uh, but due to the sufficient number of uh, measurement uh, points uh, that um, use the term cloud of points, a spa spatial representation of the object surface is obtained. The technology itself is able to collect millions of 3D points, so registering uh, XYZ coordinates and reflection intensity parameters. So <clears throat> the acquired data can therefore be imported into applications such as uh, uh, CAD or BIM software like, for example, AutoCAD, Outplan, uh, Archicad, Revit, and, and so on, and can be freely processed as the point cloud itself. So laser scanners are used to measure and 
design industrial installations, uh, uh, checkups for doing a checkups for uh, structural design, and also um, create the possibility to measure the things which complexity is so large that measurements by classical methods are uh, do not bring uh, any desired effects. So, <clears throat> in addition, underground excavations such as mines, uh, tunnels. Uh, their use facilitates obtaining the maximum information. So laser scanners becoming this uh, uh, method of uh, photogrammetric, let's say, and uh, also connect with connection of photogrammetry soil measurements, in which the development process is um, excessive and long-lasting. It's like an archiving, so it gives you this possibility to go back to this. So it's not uh, uh, just uh, measurements written on the paper, but it's also this kind of uh, uh, let's say a database of uh, of the asset that you uh, that you have for the life cycle of the project of design. So laser scanning, laser scanning is used uh, in terrestrial measurements and soil measurements, and this technology is implemented by uh, different systems. For example, total stations or laser scanners itself, like this Faro unit here. And they're going to be a, a little bit Faro because I'm a Faro user, so it's uh, the equipment that I'm using. Uh, I will share what kind of equipment I'm using, of course. So <clears throat> laser scanning, as I said before, can be divided into TLS, MLS, and ALS. What are those, those shortcuts? So TLS is laser scanning, terrestrial version of laser scanning. MLS is this mobile laser scanning, and ALS, aerial laser scanning. So you can, for example, use drones. We're using, in our company, we're using DJI drones, Phantom 4 Pro. And uh, yeah, they, they're working well. So after the point cloud is processed in third party uh, application, it can be uh, stitched in and, and point cap, uh, for example. So it's, uh, it's really useful to uh, have drone in your company, whether you're using laser scan or you're just gonna start with laser scanning because drone gives you this possibility to uh, have basic um, analysis, even for architectural purpose. Like let's imagine you have a, uh, you have uh, infill to design. So it's a really quick way to uh, the laser scanner itself and this uh, mobile mapping. It's a very quick way to actually achieve the data um, that you uh, that you want, that you uh, need to get in order to uh, create a, uh, efficient and sufficient building. So build sun analysis, <clears throat> uh, shading analysis and so on. And the question, how does laser scanning works? In, in this layman term. So in, la in laser scan, the measurement is carried out with laser beam, right? So it works mo most often in the near infrared range. So uh, it's pulsating with high efficiency and frequency and thanks to prism, which rotates uh, in a vertical plane. So the maximum scanning speed depends on the scanner model, of course. Uh, most often it is several thousand uh, points of, uh, per second. So the distance from the measure point uh, is determined by uh, measure the time it takes for the beam to reach the object and back. The measuring set includes, uh, let's say, computer equipped with uh, specialized software. I'm using my PC uh, all the time. I'm going to show you uh, thoughts what kind of PC I'm using uh, for the um, for this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, particular jobs. You're gonna be surprised, I think, because uh, I'm running a full software there and it's uh, working very well till today. It's not it's not the newest version. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so basically this, this graph, I say, represents uh, the idea uh, of how laser scanning works. So you need to have some positions in order to stitch it and create uh, the structure that you want, right? The structure that you, uh, measuring laser scanning, so it's it's actually very uh, it's it's uh, I like this part of work because it's uh, sometimes of course it takes time a lot of time because it depends on what kind of accuracy what kind of uh, detail you want but in this way it's very um, very nice uh, very nice kind of work uh, to do and of course also <clears throat> there is a possibility to uh, not only laser scan but also create a mesh models, I mean, from laser scanning and from photogrammetry. Here you have a, just an example 
of one of the statues in Krakow that I that we did, and um, it's it was uh, done with uh, photogrammetry just. So it's uh, we used a little bit of drone and uh, Nikon cameras. We use Nikon cameras like from the 700 to um, the 800. Uh, it's uh, and they working for us very well with uh, of course you know, we're, um, appropriate uh, optics. But this is a mesh model. Uh, it was uh, first uh, process in scene, then in point cap, we uh, did uh, little, um, let's say, views and uh, meshing. And after this mesh was applied, we cleaned the mesh in uh, mesh lab, for example. So as far as I remember, so that was a, that was process here. <clears throat> the question is also, who should use a laser scanning? And uh, there are several people. There are several functions, uh, let's say, uh, who uh, might use, who might uh, benefit from that, and even not might, but will benefit from that, so at most architects uh, and uh, engineers, I think, and restorers, but also um, today in gaming industry, it's very uh, like important to have a uh, possibility to create very natural, like natural, uh, I would say, even um, environments which are very, um, which are very uh, realistic. So uh, in that case, it's uh, it's always uh, giving this idea that laser scanning techniques and laser scanning itself gives you this possibility because of reality capture, for example. <clears throat> and urban planning, so it's on the SIM scale, so it's city information modeling, uh, infrastructure, of course, so lading, railing, uh, urban uh, scale again. Uh, artists also uh, by use of laser scanning. For me, uh, laser scanning and also uh, orthophoto maps in many cases are, are just uh, pieces of art which I'll uh, share with you, of course. And uh, at the end, criminologists in the industry. So this is like uh, the basic outcome of what you can actually do and uh, what, who can actually achieve that. And uh, it's, uh, it's like um, basically giving this example of uh, how laser scanning can be used in the interesting way, in the sufficient way, and efficient way for your business, because that's that's what we're talking about here. <clears throat> and um, the question is, how it should be done, uh, this laser scanning, this process? So let's say we have a laser scanner, we bought it, it might be ZNF, might be Leica, it might be Faro, I will... Uh, of course, as, as Faro user, because that's what I'm using. That's that's what the hardware that I know. And um, we, as Faro users in, in Team Factoria, uh, we think that they, what they're doing is actually really nice, and uh, the hardware is uh, good quality. Uh, it's a solid equipment, and uh, we use laser scanners like uh, Faro Focus uh, S120. Uh, sorry, S150, uh, S70, and the old version of uh, laser scanner, so it's 120S. But uh, uh, here is a, just a graph from uh, Faro, actually. Like we, uh, we like to uh, use this methodology here because it co connects the building information modeling. So the, the whole idea of, uh, of BIM is so the life cycle of the design life cycle of the building of the asset so uh, actually the question is not only how you do that but also when you do that so for us we are using laser scanner in every phase in many cases inventories classic inventories so uh, that's that's what we do the most with laser scanning but also we use laser scanning for uh, as is state to check whether there's some kind of a a uh, misconception with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, steel or, or a structural design or uh, or any different cases. So this kind of stuff that we're doing, it's, uh, it's very uh, important for our practice. So, <clears throat> and um, uh, it's uh, as a building information modeling itself works. So we have three phases like design, build, operate. Of course, those main phases has many more like uh, from evaluation itself, and then we go to conceptual design, detailed design, analytical design, and fabrication design. So we, we have all those phases uh, divided for branches, which uh, gives you the ability of uh, actually, um, let's say, 
uh, re um, re-understanding or repositioning your uh, your structure in your company and how the task can be divided in between so it's uh, it, this is a very important part for um, for the the user itself to uh, how, how to use the software and hardware here and uh, what, what should be maintained here and so on that's of course a different kind of uh, story it's like a BIM execution plans it's uh, AERs from the uh, from the investor point of view uh, because uh, also that uh, has to be said you can use laser scanning for many many different like many many different people can use laser scanning not only specialists but also uh, the data itself so I do not only mean like everyone should scan but uh, I don't mean that I meant more like everyone can benefit from a laser scan so uh, all actors in the uh, asset management uh, in the in the design process right so uh, for example uh, there are many cases like uh, in demolition right when you're doing renovation modification it's good to use laser scanning especially when you have let's say previous iterations of the building scan so this is really uh, really really nice to, to get and um, uh, of course, uh, the, the many cases that laser scanner might be used today on construction site, that's very important. It's uh, planning uh, phase and uh, QA and QC, so quality assurance and <clears throat> quality control of the field of the uh, construction site. So the idea is that you can use laser scanning everywhere and it gives you a lot of possibilities. So for example, you can capture on site, right? You can uh, remodel from that. You can remodel uh, models uh, itself. You can uh, create design layouts and layouts or the photo maps itself, and also uh, maintain the quality control mostly in the factories when we're talking about speaking about prefabrication and uh, 4D, 5D in BIM. And um, uh, but but at most it's a construction uh, site. So for example, mobile mapping uh, with a drone. Uh, of construction site from time to time with specific uh, points <clears throat> at uh, at the uh, at, at our uh, workflow, and um, uh, but also for operation and management. So for those uh, kind of parts, you are able to uh, just uh, have the laser scanning data in your PC or in this on the server and cloud service, for example, or the SharePoint from Microsoft, let's say. And uh, how we can do that, you can actually store the data. And basically, what you can do with this, it's uh, have a web expert viewer, for example, which I will show you uh, the benefits uh, of it, because it's, it's one of the tools that we're using uh, the most. Uh, and um, it's very fast, and all of our uh, subcontractors, mostly they just like, uh, they'd be so happy to get the data as quick as possible. So uh, you, you will see what I mean. And um, uh, yeah, so there are many uses of laser scan that can be uh, like that, that you can benefit. But the laser scan, the laser scanning itself, can be used through whole life cycle of design. That's that's the fact. That's the most important thing for you. So it's not only like uh, because when you think about investment, right, in the laser scanning, it's like oh, it's very like cost, like high cost, and like that's a huge amount of money maybe we shouldn't do that maybe we shouldn't buy that like maybe we should hire someone to do that that's also the idea because uh, then you don't have to uh, first do it on your own uh, then uh, like think about all the quality that you need to assure when you like scanning because it's a delicate instrument still but in the, at the same uh, time uh, it's very uh, important to to understand that uh, you are able to get any kind of data you want so the color for example uh, the analysis of uh, wall the structures the, uh, the structural analysis uh, the um, like any kind of views probably you want uh, you can even export let's say dwg lines in uh, cartesian uh, structure so it's like working in the specific environment that you need and so it's it's very it's very good on this uh, at this point for you to uh, basically maintain uh, this kind of uh, 
possibility to uh, get the uh, get get it work get, get it work done. So <clears throat> just uh, just for the for the record, uh, I think that's that's how you can explain laser scanning itself during the life cycles. Of course, it's a very broad topic, but I think the, the essence is here. So <clears throat> how it should be done? So scan to BIM, we might say. All right. So uh, there are like several points which we think we uh, you, you should do it like that. So you should have a goal. So before sending someone of your team or yourself uh, out to collect data for the scan to BIM project uh, for, for the process itself, you may need to make sure that you have a goal in mind, right? So <clears throat> what will data be used for? So uh, how it's going to be processed? Should we process that on site or not? Should we just scan it? Will there be a possibility to do that? So there are many factors which you need to, um, let's say, get into the uh, consideration. Uh, if the team knows what you will use it for, uh, you can be more efficient practically to uh, in the capture of scan data of project. So, uh, so uh, next point is sending a team. So you send someone to the project site can to conduct the, the scanning itself, and then the person uh, who conduct the scans, you need to know that knows how to set up a scanner, enter the parameters because scanner has different parameters uh, such as scan density or number of measurement points uh, which needs to be taken or maybe some kind of extra points which will help you to stitch the scans. Uh, so, so it's like this. Uh, we do not believe in automatic uh, alignment of scans because it's, uh, that's not the quality that we're going here. We want something that we legitimately understand and we are like, we, we know what's happening here because sometimes when you do automatic, uh, automatic um, stitching, right, of, of, of point clouds, it's uh, problematic because there might be a lot of errors on the way, even if uh, matrix is saying it differently of the, of the scan from data. So it's better, in our opinion, it's better to uh, actually just use uh, uh, this uh, like manual stitching, which is uh, cloud to cloud, for example. So it's it's more uh, more powerful for us. It's like you're doing it once and it's done. You're not coming back. So it's uh, it's just working how it should work. And um, <clears throat> the next thing, so so we already know that qualified STEM is the key, right? Um, then um, you take multiple scans, like this, and many scans as you need. So the good thing before to do that is analysis of, of the place, right? If it's possible. So maybe you can go to the site first. Maybe you can decide whether you need this scan or not, because later on it might occur that you did uh, not much or you were hurrying up and you didn't do an efficient amount of uh, laser scans. So the scanner can only capture what it sees, as you saw in the previous uh, slides. It can only capture what it sees, and so what is in line of sight. So in order to get a complete, uh, let's say, representation of uh, of the project, you need to take multiple scans from different locations. So when you know the purpose of your scan data, you can be uh, most efficient with your time. And uh, then there's this moment: transfer data to your Mac, PC, or cloud, whatever. So, like uh, when we're talking about just the data uh, capture, right? Because in general, capture data, uh, capture data means uh, it's uh, uh, like it's done. You're putting your, uh, let's say, you're putting your SD card into the uh, computer, and it's uh, manually uh, downloaded. You have your probably you have your store, storage file system, uh, which I totally recommend to do. To have because uh, file management is the key, with, especially with laser scanning. Mm, so it's very uh, important to do. And um, uh, also, uh, yeah, that, that's that's what you should do. And after that, you you have this uh, let's say archived. Uh, do a lot of archives. Have some kind of steps on your uh, on your way uh, of of working. So it's a very uh, it's a very uh, important to do. And then you have registration. So before sharing the scan data with others, the individual scans needs to be registered. 
so into one composite clouds of points. So uh, you use your point cloud modeling software or sorry your uh, registration software uh, to analyze or model the data itself uh, and then import uh, scan to modeling software. So after registering your point cloud uh, the data can be imported, uh, but not only point cloud itself, but you, uh, sometimes you don't need even a point cloud in your data. And I'll show you why. For example, for quick auditing, it's it's not always uh, useful to do a point cloud uh, in the in the software itself. So uh, it's of course um, it depends on the process. So, but the question is, is that enough? And my work will be more efficient enough just by laser scanning. Let's say I've upgraded in my firm. There's this upgrade from we're going from classic to this laser scanning. 21st century is here. Uh, we have lasers. <laughs> and, uh, and the question is, uh, how can uh, can we make it work for us in the best way? How can we get the, the essence of the laser scanning of, of the point clouds? The question is simple. The, the answer for the question is simple. So you need to use the right tools. Uh, so by right tools, I meant uh, point cap here. And why? Uh, well, because this software is the software that gives you results. It's the software from my practical point of view, uh, from my practical perspective. It's the software that gives you the possibility to um, do things, not think about how to do them which is totally different. So um, uh, we have several steps which, which we can do. So we register our cloud data. We uh, Then we automatically create uh, sections and elevations. Then uh, we can process it in every CAD system practically today because it's working with DWG, DXF, and it easy up the BIM creation. Of, uh, for the whole life cycle. So it's uh, able to, like, gives us the possibility to create all of the information from the point cloud as a BIM structure, BIM model. Uh, but not only by importing point cloud itself to the software that we're using, for example, ArchiCAD or Revit, but also because of add-ons that point cloud has. So it's like, if you are a Revit user, you can use add-on for, uh, for Revit. Uh, points for Revit. If you're an Archicad user, you can use, use for points for BIM. So it's it's that uh, simple. And of, okay, I'm I'm speaking about uh, the the software. I'm speaking about uh, laser scanning. How laser scanning is great. How software is great. But the question is, will my PC run it? Will uh, will I be able to work on it? Because it's a uh, very uh, very important question today. We all know that laser scanning processing takes a lot of uh, manpower and uh, computing power because the, the information inside can be so big can, and that our PCs uh, or Macs might just not work with it. So <clears throat> I will share you what I'm working on mostly in the field to give you an idea guys of uh, what kind of investment you might need to do or maybe not. So that's for example that's the PC that I'm using. And it's not great PC. That's why I'm smiling because it's not the best machine for this kind of work. Why I'm showing that? Uh, because you probably most of you said like, oh, it's uh, it's totally like not good computer for that. Like, why are you using this kind of uh, computer? And uh, the question is simple. Uh, the question is simple uh, because uh, it's like we mm, we can do that. So, because the point cap is very, very optimized. Like for me, if I would change the name of software, it would be uh, called optimizator or opti optimization, like the highest level of optimization. Because all of we do, we can maintain on this kind of uh, machine, for example. Of course, if we have different workstations, we can work on uh, super like AMD Ryzen thread rippers or whatever you want to have for today, and it's going to be faster and faster. But this kind of, uh, for example, equipment uh, gave us the possibility to work on And here's some kind of work. And I will, speaking about optimization, I'll show you, of course, the examples right now of, uh, of work that we are doing, uh, we were doing, and we're going to do probably. So <clears throat> speaking uh, about the, the examples, 
Here you have uh, orthophoto maps of the uh, old uh, old um, uh, old heritage uh, monument today uh, in Poland that we we have. Those are auto orthophoto maps from Point Cap. As I'm showing you here, it's also a color one and also a classic. Uh, I'm saying black and white, but of course uh, the density uh, clouds and um, intensity clouds. Sorry. And um, uh, why I'm showing you this? Because it's uh, those pictures were needed, those orthophoto maps were needed for the first thing uh, on the field to create uh, the actual example uh, of uh, the, the total representation of acid state uh, before creating a BIM model. Because after that, we created a BIM model uh, and it was uh, used as an archive tool. But here we could do all of the uh, all of the uh, measurements, and auditing of the place, and it was very useful for uh, the heritage specialists, like archaeologists and so on. So the data was obtained from the place, like we stitch scans on the uh, at the place, and it was done basically. And then we process the data in point gap, and we were able to just uh, quickly, uh, let's say export those files and prepare packages for mm. uh, for specialists who, who need that. And um, <clears throat> uh, here you have just an example from Archicad, uh, a screenshot basically, it's 3D point cloud, because one very important thing to say about point cap is uh, why it's so efficient, why it's so powerful. Well, because in point cap uh, we are mostly using uh, 2D, which I'll show you like we, we're working on planes, but uh, in this idea we, of course, we do not lose quality and we do not lose data. The data is there, but uh, in the example, uh, the uh, for example, this building uh, had several gigabytes of data and in point cap it was smaller and smaller uh, after export from uh, recap or from scene. Uh, so it, it's it's like our, uh, our base, uh, like post-production, let's say, happening in point cloud. This is our place where we spend a lot of time, the most of the time in our point cloud process. So here is just a, a exported point cloud uh, and uh, exported point cloud uh, from point cap and from Archicad. And what I want to show you, because I mentioned the web export, this is ongoing process still. Like we are before, this is classic inventory that we're doing. This is something that we're going to send to the investor, right? They want to create a new elevators outside. It's a heritage building, so we need to uh, show that it's possible by, by laser scanning. That's the easiest and quickest way, so for auditing. But what we did is give the investor instantly, the same day, the data. What kind of data, you might ask? Well, just give me a second to show you the screen. So here, this is a web export. <clears throat> this is, uh, imagine you have, uh, imagine you have, uh, let's say, uh, the data, right? You have the data with your, um, with your thing, with your laser scanner, and you want to use it in some kind of a sufficient way. So here you have just an example, of course, of how this data can be used. So. We have two views. We have um, we have point cloud here and orthophoto map of the section. So it is very like easy for us to navigate here, right? We have also by those dots you can click to the uh, scanning point and um, scanning uh, position that you want, and it's uh, it's very simple for using measuring. So for example, here the investor could uh, just measure all of the things that he wanted. So basically because of that, we were able to give him uh, notes, we can share that with him. So it's on our server. So it's like uh, he has open access because it's basically HTML. So you can just embed in your workflow, in your, uh, like, uh, in your uh, web service. And it's perfect for, and it's perfect for this kind of work. So the data, the idea, of how you quickly you can obtain the data from the laser scanner, it's uh, it's beyond everywhere. Because for us, it's uh, like this kind of work. Normally, we would put it uh, to the uh, let's say our CAD or BIM system that we're using, 
and started to model it and then say, okay, you need to wait like three days or maybe one week or whatever, like it depends on the work, of course. Uh, so, uh, for example, this gives you the possibility to check all the details and that's not the only thing. So, as I said, there are those uh, small dots, little dots, uh, which will show you where we are. So, when I click here, I am appearing in the dot that I need. So, for example, I'm in the place that I want to be and I can see. So, it's very uh, important to uh, for, for this usage. Of course, we can export a different kind of exports, but that's another story. But as you can see, it's possible to just have uh, some kind of uh, information obtained by a laser scanner and uh, it's the quickest way for us it's basically we check many of the services and uh, this i need to say it's like the best and the quickest way uh, to to actually share this kind of data with with uh, third party so that's going back to my uh, statement that it is very quick and possible for uh, all assets to use the data from the point cloud itself so, for example, this can be done, uh, this can be sent to subcontractors. They can use this data uh, in a very efficient way, like to do the quick auditing, do, uh, do checkups, for example, for structural design, whether we have rebars and it's like a check, right? <clears throat> so, those are the examples here. And um, there's another, another one, so because there are three uh, staircases, so you can measure all of this uh, and later on, you can even put it to your CAT system or just the measurements, right? So it's very, very quick in this way and you do not need to be this uh, specialist. It just works for everyone. So that's that's the coolest feature for me for, for, from that uh, point of view. And also, of course, you can use the pictures here. So those are those positions. Uh, when you go here, you have the name of the position, the height uh, on the Z-plane, so this is cool. And also, because not only sections are working, we can do whatever. As I said, you can in PodCut, you can do whatever you want. Uh, and um, uh, it's, uh, it's yeah, you can, for example, get this uh, place and you want to measure it. So you just add points and in a quick way, you not only have uh, quality, sorry, uh, quality uh, like measurements for, for this space, but you can see how quick I'm doing that. You can just see how efficient is that. Of course, I'm not doing it uh, in a precise way, but you can just see whether it's working or not and how it's working uh, and how easy it is to use the system. So, uh, and it's working in every kind of uh, software because it's just uh, Explorer, like, uh, sorry, uh, that's not Internet Explorer, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> it's not gonna blow. So it's uh, it's basically the software that you want to, like any kind of software, it can work on your mobile phone, it can work on your smartphone, I mean, on your iPad, on whatever tool you're using. So here you have the, uh, the proper uh, area, the path. So it's really a really interesting point to, to measure. Uh, we're using that tool a lot for uh, auditing, for example, we're sending that to auditors sometimes who are not still using BIM, because not everyone in the market using BIM, uh, on the market and uh, they having, for example, elevation and they uh, measuring the like the, the, the plane itself. So they check whether how much paint this needs to be acquired, for example, or materials whatsoever. So it, it gives you the idea of uh, what kind of things you can do with that. So, <clears throat> and of course, you can also work around. So for us, because there is also a possibility to export those things in Point Cap in 3D, but for us, this kind of uh, thing, it's the most uh, interesting and efficient way. And of course, what I want to say, the quality. The quality is here. You do not lose any quality because of the compression. Because you might think, oh, sometimes the files needs to be compressed, whether to create, a, uh, let's say, the image or, or something. It's not, it's, it's very clean and so on. Here I have another example from, a, from, from a, uh, let's say, uh, our, uh, second installment, Argus Project. We, uh, this is uh, like one of the excavation sites where we were doing uh, laser scanning uh, for archaeologists. And how we use PointCut? We used uh, our laptop 
uh, on the side and uh, we use S70, Faro S70 for this uh, particular job. And what do we, uh, that data was automatically sent to the uh, archeologists. We did several, like 10, I think 10 steps. So like 10 different scans of this place so they can uh, then check what kind of different work they done. So is as you can see, uh, you also have color of course. So you just click, uh, you just click here, for example, and you can have different exports. So it's not only uh, this kind of planner export, but also bubble export. So it's more uh, like eye visible. Uh, sorry, this is in the hole. That's the wrong one. This is that's a nice one, for example. So it's uh, all the data can be here, can be used. It was very uh, high uh, sunrise. So you can see, and here you have a, some kind of points like a, uh, mirror, mirror balls, like the white balls that we're using for, uh, let's say, um, connecting scan points. Uh, and um, yeah, so this is this is what you can do. Uh, basically, here are two different approaches, like uh, like as you can see, and. Um, that's very like the same idea, right? The data was automatically when some part of the data was finished, we started to export it to point cap and connect it, stitch it so it might be worked out. And then the whole documentation was created, uh, 2D documentation mostly because that's what we needed. And the mesh model was created in another, uh, in another software. So uh, here I will have just at the end, some of examples for you to to let the story. That's also another installment that we uh, that we did. This is Hodato Sentry Post in southern Poland. Uh, this is a 3D model done in Archicad 19. We used uh, BIM tool for uh, for that with point cap, and uh, because of that, we created a high with uh, Argus project. We created a high density uh, point cloud. Uh, I'm sorry, model. Uh, with all the data inside the uh, inside the uh, documentation itself so uh, when you click on something it appears uh, the data there and, and so on you know how BIM works and so that's that's how it worked and uh, this kind of data was acquired with uh, faro 120s so uh, that was the scanner for this moment those are the uh, just the renders quick renders and those are all the photo maps from uh, Point cap. And what was funny, and this is a funny story, <clears throat> uh, we went to the heritage institution for like uh, uh, with documentation for acknowledging how uh, how it's actually working and like what can you do with that. So they thought they they, they laughed at us at first and they thought like why are you guys bringing us uh, like photos like it's like we could go and do photos by ourselves, you know? It's like that. And we said, oh, that, that's not photos. It's just like laser scanning. And we started to explain them and they were like uh, in shock that the quality of that is, it's so clean and it's so good because uh, and the ortho photo maps were done in, in point cap too. But um, why I'm saying that, because we also checked many different vendors of, uh, of software, <clears throat> what you can do with uh, with the ortho photo maps like when we're using something when we diving into something because it's investment right i think everyone is doing this we want to have this like the quality for us is the the highest thing like the the, the top of the uh, list right so that needs to be checked first so we check different software and like uh, for example like maybe just importing point cloud to archicad or revit would be efficient maybe just exporting uh, files from Bentley or uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, recap or scene. No, for us, when we did uh, like comparison, we did uh, this kind of uh, uh, clean, uh, basically pictures that you can frame. It's, it's, it's just, just working. So, uh, so it gives this idea. And here you have just uh, this uh, structure done, renovated, uh, this is a drone picture and inside so because of the laser scanning uh, this place was uh, like quickly renovate the, the renovation process was quicker because we actually knew all the specific points so for example for construct structural design like uh, steel uh, uh, bars and, and so on so 
it's it's uh, this kind of a project project and here <clears throat> here we did a little auditing it's a uh, warsaw pavilion zodiac we did a uh, uh, little measuring here and with uh, power focus s7 s70 and uh, what we did here in point cap what we wanted to do actually to have this kind of uh, um, this mosaic uh, done uh, there so um, that's what uh, when we saw that it's actually gave this uh, beautiful uh, picture of course that was the like extra outcome let's say because like I, as i said for me all the point clouds getting out from the software it's like just beautifully looking and it's uh, and it's this kind of thing that you just want to uh, let's say crave on and and, and uh, use a little bit but um also, uh, what I uh, what I wanted to uh, what I wanted to tell you is uh, basically uh, the uh, what we are able to actually uh, do here. So <clears throat> then we exported the point cloud to the uh, Archicad, and here was the classic modeling took place. So, but because of those all of those uh, let's say auto photo maps that we generated from uh, point cap. It was easier for us to see some kind of details, and also because of uh, point caps filtration uh, of uh, of the cloud, the whole scene uh, project was uh, like 180 gigabytes, and the point cap exported cloud uh, for Archicad was uh, by filtration. It's called Octree filter, and that's their technology, and it's uh, it was done uh, like uh, approximately 700 to one gigabyte. 700 megabytes to one gigabyte. So, and we got all the data there like efficiently. So it was very, very nice to uh, nice to achieve that. <clears throat> then we have uh, San Marys Basilica in Yaroslav. That's the one of the places that we are. We, we are in Yaroslav and in Warsaw. If you want to check out, and um, that's I'm just showing uh, here the the beauty of the point cloud for me. So it's. This kind of uh, features that that you can do if you're an artist also if you have this idea like how can you use the point cloud itself so it's it gives you this uh, amazing uh, like outcome that well it's uh, it's kind of um, kind of the uh, thing that you wanna uh, just uh, let's say um, uh, that you wanna like print and hang hang on the wall. Right, <laughs> this kind of uh, thing for me. So, um, uh, but that's not the case at all. I mean, not only. So uh, we also did the laser scanning of the place, and uh, in our this project, what we did uh, there was this uh, there was this gate to the whole uh, monastery. So <clears throat> what we did because of uh, like this efficiency, we were quickly able to actually get the data and uh, model uh, the structure itself that needed to be renovated. So those, for example, those figures that you can see, uh, they were meshed in point cap, for example, and then cleaned in, uh, in mesh lab. Uh, some of you might know this uh, software. Mm, and uh, and they were like uh, cut it from the bigger um, uh, cloud. We exported them, created new projects because that's how we have workflow. And then we started to meshing because it's uh, that was done on more powerful machine work because meshing is a uh, hard process. Uh, and um, then, yeah, it was renovated for the original colors they conducted with the uh, heritage uh, institution. So uh, so that's how it worked. And also rendering in Radzim Podolaski, that's, that's a different kind of uh, part. So <clears throat> here you also can see uh, there was also a renovation. Here you also can see uh, the beauty, basically, for me, it's like all those parts, this kind of x-rays are, are beautiful, uh, what you can achieve. As an architect, when you think about that and you can see that, it's like some kind of a, uh, really like a painting. So so, so I, really, I really like that. And then, of course, we had the, uh, the uh, renovation done. So this is one of the propositions that we did. And with that, we were able also with the BIM software because we used the Archicad 19 and BIM tool for that also. So we created this uh, kind of uh, structure embedded in BIMX, so it was able to use. Uh, you were able to use that in, uh, during the site, during the excavation, during the um, like uh, cleaning work and so on. And then Orangery in Winesuit Palace. 
So here, uh, the archaeologists discovered uh, the old ventilation system, like uh, we can say HVAC of 16th century. <laughs> so um, here again, it's a different view. So here you have a um, laser scan, and this is this excavation, uh, this excavated um, um, uh, HVAC systems for hot and uh, cold air, and um, and uh, that we also got uh, after uh, after a day of laser scanning. So we stitched that. We uh, created web exports. We created uh, the uh, later on the 3D model, and you can see the detail here. Like it's uh, amazing, and it's uh, and just worth looking and just worth uh, working on. And also <clears throat> Church in Świętego Kowalewka. That's a small project, uh, but it's uh, the problem was uh, here are the photographs from uh, from point cap of the uh, of the uh, from, from the laser scanner obtained from the laser scanner. That's the 120s, so this older version. So as you can see here, uh, what happened here? We had this problem with uh, the structural design of wood, so the whole uh, the whole place was bending itself so it was taking a one-off wall of church like uh, on the side so what happened is basically we uh, because of laser scanning we were able to do uh, like analysis and renovation uh, um, with with the usage of laser scanning and thanks again to like i was i remember this in almost the almost Bishchade mountains in poland that's if you were anywhere close to Bishchade, like in, in poland just uh, let us know it's a beautiful place it's like worth uh, worth going and I remember sitting here next to this uh, desk and with my laptop and just you know <laughs> stitching all this uh, all those scans because uh, while the team was still laser scanning all the parts uh, I was uh, creating like the outside so it's what's uh, this project this process um, here just an example of Warsaw University of Technology of uh, architectural department uh, and I will show you the practice part in point cap, uh, what, what you can do. So <clears throat> here just a quick laser, I did a quick laser scan for, for the sake of our uh, meeting today uh, for to see whether, um, like how can you, what kind of data, uh, how can you obtain this data, right? And how fast it is actually. So you can see here uh, that I was going for staircase because I think that's one of one of the most interesting parts in the, in the building, always the staircase. It's, it's representative. It has to be uh, like um, it has to have this vibe, right, place, and and so on. So <clears throat> going here, I think I can do that. Like just uh, move my window. Yeah. So <clears throat> by going here, you can see whether uh, like that's the point cap interface. So it's very like from the beginning, you just already know what's there because it's very intuitive. And for example, I can do web export. So I want to export this kind of staircase, let's say. I want, but first maybe I should do uh, some kind of a view for this staircase. So let's do a view of the staircase um, like this. So let's do this view. And in the meantime, uh, what I want to do, let's say, this floor plan, uh, and then maybe I should duplicate it and recreate it down there, to show it, and so on. And you see, I can work on it still. So it's it's not it's not burning my PC. It's just doing itself its job. And then uh, oh, let's let's do this uh, let's do this different uh, part like maybe export some kind of point cloud data. So let's export just this part. And in the meantime, I'm still doing that. You can see here, for example, I'm putting a scan points and I want it like, like that, let's say like five centimeters uh, diameter, because that's what I want. And not to recap, but I, for example, I want the XYZ uh, format, but recap will do or XYZ, that's what I'm using, XYZ or E55, that's what I'm using when I'm exporting. And also what you can do instantly in point cap without creating even any kind of work. It's it's great because you just click here, for example, on your, uh, let's say on your place, on your bubble. I'm still working on this laptop, uh, just to be 
clear, I'm going to show you my uh, specs. So <laughs> you're not mistaken. Uh, it's uh, basically here are properties. So we just see it's the, this uh, integrated CPU, like this uh, low voltage, 16 gigs of RAM. And I think I have this uh, somewhere, this Intel Intel card. So you actually see that it's going pretty, pretty well. Like the guys from Point have optimized the software. Like it's it's working as a charm. So it's and it's really uh, really fast. Like it's a uh, it's a dense point cloud. So it's it's really uh, doing its uh, its stuff. Anyways, in the meantime, you can see I did the section here, and you might ask, what is that? What what, what are those uh, lines, right? Well, those are lines which are, uh, we call it vectorizer. Uh, you can vectorize lines in point cap. So uh, point cap detects the density of the cloud. And basically what it do, it shows you the, let's say automatically, by automatically doing that, it shows you uh, like some kind of spe specific points. Uh, so we are using this tool a lot because it helps us uh, mostly in staircases, but it helps us for example, in this project for uh, archaeologists, this, this, those ruins, we did uh, a little bit of, of that and then we started to um, basically um, create, uh, because of this vectorizer here, we created this kind of um, uh, views, let's say, and so on. Let's, let's stop that because I want to show you something different uh, in our time still. So <clears throat> here you have a detail of, um, of, of this staircase and you can see how dense we can go with the detail here. So it's very, very detailed. You're not you're losing any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, data because of uh, point cap. So here you have a picture, right? So it's uh, just all, all of this is very, very, very like, detailed. And of course, it depends on the, what kind of uh, uh, like things you have on laser scanner, but still you see how um, like how fast it is? How many how many things you can do at the same time? How many times you're not uh, you're not waiting for uh, for the program to do something? You just can work with that. But for me, this is the best part of point cap. Like it's it's just uh, working uh, as it should work. And uh, also one thing that I want to show you this data management because like. Uh, I think everyone who's using uh, laser scanners struggling with uh, processing data uh, for for the sake of uh, for the sake of uh, of the use of, of software. And I'll show you one thing to just see uh, the, the 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 project itself. So one of the projects that I show you already. Uh, just give me a second, and so you can see how much it weights on your hard drive. Because that's very interesting always. It's um, basically let's oh, let's check for example this uh, uh, this three uh, D model that I was showing you from uh, from the no maybe this uh, so this school uh, or okay maybe that. Sorry for for that, but my server is uh, crazy right now. Here you have the Zodiac. It's still counting, right? 196 gigabytes. That's the that's the Zodiac. So here it's a point cap of Zodiac. Um, what is what is it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, and here is a project of Zodiac in Point Cap. It's still counting files, but you see uh, how big the project is uh, while uh, seeing this kind of part. So it's uh, let's let's give it a, a moment. I'm gonna go back, switch for a moment here. So here you see the layout. Uh, here I have uh, this. Uh, this section and for example just showing web export like partially what you can achieve like point cap checking uh, the, uh, the 
let's say the uh, where the density is and for example for me uh, of course the best part is when it's clean like it's a small part of, of the of the cut but here you can see whether the system might find some kind of uh, useful lines if not you can draw them in point which is also very important because you then you know the data is embedded in the xyz parameter like uh, in, in the app so uh, it's not moved it's not crashed or whatever and just this graphic card to show you uh, what kind of system that i'm using here which is uh, you will see it's a really bad graphic card <laughs> it's uh where is it um, i can find it but it's intel gma 520 it's this uh is this uh, embedded into processor uh, so it's yeah hardware here that will tell me what i have yeah so it's uh, this kind of processor and uh, yeah intel hd graphics so you see it's like a basic it's a basic computer it's not something uh, it's not something great so um, um so yeah i think uh, it's still working but uh, here again uh, of course, you can use measurements, so you can do all of the things you want to do in, in the program here, and uh, you can draw lines, so it's 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 great for, for you. And here you have the zodiac, so again, you can see the full point cap uh, model, like it's it's a whole 3D point cap you have. You're not operating in 3D, you're operating in 2D, but which is more um, efficient and more uh, reliable for you. Uh, it's it's way so much less, it's just... Uh, 10 times less so it's uh, and you get a lot of different outcomes right it's not only process point cloud which you can just have a 3d let's say and then export data here you actually see the process and every project basically is your database because of the views you create and naming and so on so it's it's just for me it's just working okay <clears throat> so with that i think uh I would like to, I was almost precise with time, and uh, with that I would like to thank you very much for listening, and if there are any questions, do not hesitate to ask, we, we can ask now, if not, I would like to thank you very much for listening, and uh, yep, we, we can conclude our meeting. So, I see there are questions, uh, two questions, uh, it's, uh, how do you compare point cap and other softwares that you have used for BIM application? I think I explained that, um, like and, and the, the benefits, the advantages, let's say. So for me, the, the most uh, the, the most important advantage is uh, that it works uh, just fast. It's work it works fast, works efficient in efficient way. It gives me the possibility as a practical practical architect working in the field. It gives me the possibility to do things very very quick. Mm, and I think there are no more questions. So guys, uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, I just here you can visit our website, our LinkedIn and visit PointCap website to get all of the stuff there that is there. The, the guys from PointCap created the whole system for you to uh, navigate through, like for solutions, for all of the uh, things that you uh, where possible to um, uh, all of the features that you want to check in the software. So or just here, uh, going back for a moment, um, uh, like all of those features here uh, and there will be explained, are explained on website. So you can see here it found some kind of lines. It also found the lines here. So you can see it's very, very, very precise. And if not, if it didn't found the lines, you can draw it by yourself. What does it gives you? It gives you this uh, this uh, ideal thing that you are able to actually just, uh, when you export that, it stays in the place that the point cloud is. So it's not a separate drawing. It's just uh, it's just how it uh, should be. So it's in the in the right place. Of course, sometimes you can get some kind of uh, misalignments, right? But in general, you see. You have the structure to start, so it gives you so much like possibility to fasten up your work with and actually use point cloud in this uh, uh, in this uh, quick way. So for auditing, for example, if I would like to audit this this kind of place and, um, and just measure the area, 
uh, of uh, of this uh, here going back to layout of this corridor right i'm just doing it here and it's uh, it just uh, let's say this part and it just going out for me and updating in the real time so this is very efficient and you can also export that to, to export the planes export the points uh, create the 3d planes 3d points like you can do many many things with this software and i would need uh, several days for for you uh, for that to explain to you because uh, there are so many things to to explore so thank you again very much and uh, hope we like listen to each other again maybe and yeah have a good day goodbye